Analysis of Mammoth's Wood by Owen Shears for the AQA GCSE Literature Exam. Mammoth's Wood. For years afterwards, the farmers found them. The wasted young turning up under their plough blades as they tended the land back into itself. A chit of bone, the china plate of a shoulder blade, the relic of a finger, the blown and broken bird's egg of a skull, all mimicked now in flint, breaking blue and white across the field where they were told to walk, not run, towards the wood and its nesting machine guns. And even now the earth stands sentinel, reaching back into itself for reminders of what happened, like a wound working a foreign body to the surface of the skin. This morning, twenty men buried in one long grave, a broken mosaic of bone linked arm in arm, their skeletons paused mid-dance macabre in boots that outlasted them, their socketed heads tilted back at an angle, and their jaws, those that have them, dropped open as if the notes they had sung have only now, with this unearthing, slipped from their absent tongues. Okay, so there's the poem, and using the flirts analysis, uh, form, language, imagery, rhythm, rhyme, tone, subject, we are starting uh, with subject, as we would always do. We need to work out what the poem is about. Uh, Mammoth's Wood uh, is a poem that describes the uncovering of the remains of bodies from the Battle of Somme. Okay, the Battle of the Somme was a... a bloody and brutal battle in the First World War where many, many, many young men uh, on all sides lost their life. And uh, in the Belgian battlefields, still today, because of the, the vast expanse of the, uh, the First World War, the farmers are still finding remains, remains of bodies and uh, remains of uh, artillery shells and uh, shrapnel and so forth. And it just gives you an idea at how, how uh, big the war uh, was and the, the, the massive impact it must have had at the time. To work out the form, we uh, the subject, we go back to the start of flirts and look at form. And here we've got the first three stanzas to give you an idea. The stanzas are all written in, with three lines, okay, so there's a uniform stanza length, but the line length, however, is varying. And also, if you have a look at the end of each stanza, you will notice that there is a pattern. Um, there are full stops at the ends of stanza 1, 3, 4, 6 and 7. So it's a seven stanza poem, but not all stanzas have full stops at the end of them. So there's one stanza with a full stop, and then you have to wait until stanza 3. So there are two stanzas together. Um, it makes a lot more sense if you obviously have the whole poem uh, in front of you. Uh, so if we go back, you can see that the first stanza it's on its own, and then we have two stanzas together, um, and then one stanza on its own, two stanzas together, and then the final stanza on its own. So what does this mean? Well, the varying line lengths, uh, it produces a bit of an uneven poem despite the uniform stanza length and what this does it breaks up the neatness um, and this could resemble this could uh, the, suggest the turning over of the earth by the plough um, but also I think that it suggests the disruption um, of the war to the lives of the, the young men well to the lives of everyone um, uh, at that time in Europe okay so the the uneven line lengths or the, the variation in the line lengths, show a disruption, disruption to the normal order. The single stanzas in the poem, so these are stanzas 1, 4 and 7, these are the ones that stand alone uh, with their, their full stops. Uh, these are where the poet Owen Shears is describing the earth, these represent the earth, and the pairs of stanzas, stanzas 2 and 3, and stanzas 5 and 6, these represent the sh soldiers. Okay, for language, I've got three quotes on the side for years now, this morning. There are other quotes you can go into. This is just uh, uh, this video, as all of the others, uh, just to give you, point you in the right direction. You need to go and um, work out some more for yourselves as well. I can't do all of it for you. Um, so first of all, it's uh, the language of the poem is plain and simple. There's language such as the quotes we have here, years, now, this morning, all evoke a sense of time. Now, with the language being plain and unambiguous, 
Um, unambiguous means it's quite clear. There's no um, uh, there's no doubt about the language. It's straightforward, and there's no ambivalence to it. It's quite direct. Um, I think in a way that this reflects how the unearthing of the bodies in Belgium it's become part of the norm. It, you know, we, if you were to uncover um, remains uh, in your garden or over here, you know, this would be a, a huge event. It'd be something that would be quite shocking and, and quite distressing. But um, in the battlefields of the, the First World War, it's become part of the normality. So the, the language is plain in order to, di uh, to reflect this. The references to time, now, this morning, for years, uh, it shows that with the passing of time, you know, even after the decades, it's nearly a hundred years now since the start of the First World War, there are still bodies being found. There are still these literal reminders to the First World War um, in Mamet's Wood, and therefore the area provides um, almost a lasting memorial to the, uh, to the fallen soldiers. Now the imagery, there's, this is a poem that is loaded with imagery, there's uh, lots that you could write about here in, uh, just for this section and I've got some quotes there um, on the left hand side, China plate of a shoulder blade, relic of a finger, earth stand sentinel, etc, etc. Uh, there's lots of metaphors, so the China plate of a uh, shoulder blade, relic of a finger. There's lots of metaphors and they show how the remains are fragile and precious. The earth is personified. The sentinel means uh, means a guard, means a watchman, um, and so the earth is being personified in that way. Uh, then there are material objects uh, such as their boots, which uh, show to have been um, uh, are in contrast with their lives. Uh, the bodies in the mass grave. So this image of the the mass grave um, shows that the soldiers are united in death. And then the sound images there, the the notes that they had sung. Um, and there's some music as well uh, with the the kind of the that the skeletons are dancing in the, the dance macabre. Okay, the metaphors China and relic these represent the fragility of life. China plate. If you think about it, Owen Shears has chosen this because of the shoulder blade. Uh, if you uh, lean lean behind and uh, or, or feel behind you and, and feel your shoulder blade, you will see that it kind of resembles a, a shoulder. Uh, uh, a china plate, but also China does share the same qualities as bone. It's brittle, it's fragile, it can break easily, and once it's broken, it's very difficult to repair. Very difficult to repair seamlessly, anyway. Uh, the relic, well, a relic is a sacred and precious artifact. Um, for many years, uh, centuries ago, um, people used to sell, uh, or people used to buy what they thought were relics of saints and, and these would often be um, um, you know bones uh, and they thought that they were buying finger bones or, 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 um, um, or arm but you know parts of the, the skull or, or something of saints in reality of course they were most likely being sold um, animal bones um, but uh, the the relic here is a, um, it's a it suggests that kind of bone but also it shows that it is precious and by describing the remains through these metaphors, uh, it means that Owen Shears, the poet, can write with a, a sense of respect. Um, and whilst I put avoiding the brutality of the image, it's not necessarily avoiding the brutality, but it's 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 being respectful uh, to the the image rather than just saying you know they're finding bones. It gives a um, a, a fuller picture to the images. With the earth being personified as a, a sentinel, as a, a, as a watch guard, um, it shows that the earth is permanent and it has seen wars throughout time and it will continue to do so. Um, and the, the earth is permanent and this contrasts with the transience, the changeability of human life. We are mortal and we only have a, a, a certain time on this earth, but the earth is, has stood for, uh, for millennia. The boots remaining also reinforces this image and that the, the boots have stayed behind, yet their, their lives have gone. 
Life is fragile and it will end, yet the material object and the earth remains. Uh, interestingly, going back to uh, the language as well, the um, the sentinel is uh, language of war, okay, a watch guard, a, um, um, a, well, the guard itself just has connotations of uh, conflict. The final images of, of the mass grave and the soldiers uh, being linked uh, and dancing um, gives a sense of unity and comradeship to those that have died in battle. Uh, the music and dancing suggests joy, uh, which could contrast with the uh, with the tone of the poem. Um, however, I think it makes uh, the end of this poem more poignant um, um, and more solemn. Um, and it really helps for me personally, for me to reflect on the passing of uh, these young men in battle. Rhythm and rhyme. Well, there's no uniform rhythm pattern as we've uh, established in form uh, the lines are of an uneven length and there's no rhyme scheme um, and as I've said uh, previously this represents the uneven field um, uh, being dug up by the plowing and the the longer lines it is possible to say uh, that they signify the bones rising up like that wound um, going to the surface. Again, it, it might be interesting to kind of turn the poem horizontally and have a look that the the um, the, the different uh, lengths of the lines show this uneven kind of earth pattern, um, as it were. Um, and I think the lack, lack of the rhyme scheme, well, I've said here that it um, reinforces the solemnity of the poem. This is a poem about people that have died and it's describing their remains being found. And that's not to say that all poems that rhyme are, are joyful and, and happy poems. Um, but I think without a rhyme scheme here and without rhyming words, it just makes the poem um, more sombre. And talking of sombre, we now move on to tone. And we have some quotes there on the left hand side. The wasted young tended the land back into itself like a wound working a foreign body to the surface of the skin. And then the final stanza there. You can see that throughout this poem there is a sense of loss. However, there are still images of um, things getting better, that uh, things can recover, can be repaired. And then the in that final stanza, the bodies and the earth are represented as being united in song. So as I've said, the poem is sombre. It presents the loss of life in uh, the First World War um, to be a waste, as of course it was. However, with these images of the earth repairing of it itself, tending itself, tending the land back into itself, um, and um, this shows that the earth will get better. We can, the, we can repair, we can recover. The simile of the wound and the foreign body shows again how the earth is able to recover from the horrors of the war. Now this final stanza with showing the soldiers being unearthed it's describing the soldiers and the earth within the same uh, stanza and it shows that the unearthing frees the bodies and by being free uh, they are singing in order to celebrate it figuratively of course they're not literally singing um, having been uncovered and recovered, um, they are now um, able to have a proper burial, uh, which offers a full closure to the ultimate sacrifice that they have made. 